Yeah. Do you remember that time that your house smelled like sauerkraut for three days? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. It didn't smell like sauerkraut for three days. It my- was just. I think. Just a couple of hours. <laughs> I mean, in my head, it smelled like that for like a week. I think because so. it maybe have gotten in your thick red hair. Probably. When you yeah. drop the jar so, of full so, sauerkraut. So here's, it wasn't a jar, first of all. It was a barrel. It was, <laughs> it was a fucking barrel. <laughs> it okay? was not a barrel of sauerkraut. <laughs> it was a jar shaped like a barrel. So therefore, a barrel of sauerkraut. Oh, so, actually, you're not. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're mm-hmm, not wrong. Yeah, okay. no. That shit's burned into my memory. I know what that is. So... <laughs> Uh, no, so like it was a it was a cold, wet thing of sauerkraut, right? It'd been in the fridge. It had never been opened, and it did have condensation on. Right, it. I will so give you that. It was it was a slippery boy, and <laughs> Katie hands it to me, and she's like, "Hey, I can't get this off," and which I was is like, weird. Cause, yeah, um, you have a better grip the strength, beefier than me. one. That yeah. is correct. So I don't know. Yeah, so I yeah. hand it to you. well, you your hand you have bigger hands. Than That's me. true. And I was like, I can do that, yeah, because in my lizard brain, I'm like, yeah, I strong do stuff. So. She hands me this this fucking wet jar of sauerkraut and is like, "Hey, can you open this?" I'm I like, just, "Yeah, dude." I just wanted it with, with my um, Polish sausage. Yeah, um, yeah. What's it called? Kielbasa. Yeah, kielbasa. Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. So yeah. she was making dinner. She was like, "Here, let me like help me." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, I got this. No, no big deal." And like, I turned just right, and I was sitting at her kitchen island, and like, <laughs> it slipped through my hands, and like, I tried to catch it, and it just. <clears throat> onto the floor just, and i was like no it just yeeted itself out of your hands yeah, and onto the floor it and did. just full yeah big glass yeah. jar of sauerkraut yeah. everywhere unopened beautiful big glass of sauerkraut and just all over the floor the whole thing so juices and everything yeah it was, it was a very juicy wet sauerkraut <laughs> so <laughs> that shit was on the floor for a hot minute it was and it was just <sighs> it smelled so bad. So, like, like sauerkraut is great. Like, don't get me wrong. But when you just drop a whole jar onto the floor, <laughs> and then you just hate yeah. yourself because now you have all of that yeah. sauerkraut on your floor. Yeah, it was great. We were put up. We were picking up glass for like the next what, like hour? Oh yeah, because it hit yeah. the tile floor, yeah. shattered. Yeah, and went yeah. At, like down the kitchen yeah. into the living, like mm-hmm. across the living room, over the carpet, mm-hmm. underneath the couch. Yeah. Which is which is like a solid 10, 15 feet. Like it went a ways. It did. So it it, it, it had some force behind it. It was a big old jar. Yeah. Well, of so. course, like it's immediate panic of animals. Oh right. God! Like yeah. the dog and the cat. Thank God the dog wasn't like, oh, what's this big shiny thing that looks like it tastes like ice water? Because <sighs> get it, glass looks like ice. It, so yeah, it took that's, me a second. That's cool. So. Yeah, that happened. And uh, but every we, time I showed up to your house for a while, I was like, fucking sauerkraut. I think it was like your brain triggered that oh, memory yeah. and you smelt the sauerkraut mm-hmm. because when my dad came home, he didn't say anything. And oh, nice. he, he thinks sauerkraut smells like a fart. So he's always like, oh. smells like a fart in here. Oh, nice. Because I was meal prepping. Yeah. Because that's, that's my jam. It's meal yeah. prepping. So I was meal prepping the sauerkraut and the kielbasa with some potatoes. Yeah. And then good to go. somebody dropped all of all of my sauerkraut onto mm-hmm. the floor. Yep. She was like, oh, oh no, my sauerkraut. Oh no, my sauerkraut. It was just, it was just, she was totally fine with it, but I was like, oh no, now you have to go buy a whole new tub of sauerkraut. Like two dollars <laughs> and change of sauerkraut. <laughs> Your sauerkraut barrel. It's fine. I'll just pick up some more after the gym tomorrow. It's fine. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, it was all fine. It just, I'll never forget making your house smell like sauerkraut. Just eating your sauerkraut onto the floor. It's all right. It's just it's just a memory now, mm-hmm. and it's it's gonna be all right. We, yep. we made it through. We cleaned it all up. Mm-hmm. We like we hardcore tag team that bitch, and we cleaned that's it true. Up, so that's true. It's all right. So now we know that you're never allowed to like. If anybody ever is like, I need to open this jar. Do yep. not ask Zoe. She's do forbidden not. to open nope. jars at this point. It's it's me now. Mm-mm. Yep. Don't let jars. me open stuff. And if nope. I can't open it, it's. Oh well, not too bad. I guess it's stuck forever. Because this, this is one at solid least thing. It's in the jar and not shattered on the floor. Correct. Yes, stinky floor mess. <gasps> oh, <sighs> good times. Good times. Oh, the best of times. But you want to know it's also good times. What spooky stories? The best stories. All the stories. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Flip, flip that coin. Where's girl. the coin? I, you laid it on the table. I think. Maybe. Why am I like this? I, I I'm also like technical this. Technical difficulties. It's, it's totally fine. Oh no! I was behind ah, the mic. Aha. I found it. I found, we found this coin. All right. Flip it. Uh, you choose this you time. You choose. Because I'm bitch. flipping, so you choose. Okay. Uh, heads. You you go first. Ah! Wait, it landed on heads. Yes. That means you yes. go. You go. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Because so- I, I chose correctly. Okay. Because last time I chose butt tails and it was- You heads. said- that's not what you said. No. What did I say? Like, I don't remember what I said, to you be said, honest. You said, I choose ass. And then I yeah. was like, why did yeah. you? Oh. Yeah. Butt ass. That one. <laughs> 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 All right. So. Tell me. My spooky story this week is uh, called The Devil's Tramping Ground. Ooh. Oh, it's better than the Satan's butt crack. Yeah. Or his office. So yeah. now we're at his tramping grounds. Correct. Yes. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of things called The Devil's Whatever in north carolina which was where this takes place really yes That's weird. so many we'll do a just a series what on is, like what is the happen- devil's things <laughs> <laughs> just a mass list like shotgun blast yeah what what is happening over in north carolina do like do we need to be concerned like I, do we need maybe? to get the reins of africa and bring them over to north carolina what is happening i mean maybe you know there was a priest one time that actually blessed the reins in africa like straight up was like oh let's let's i'm gonna bless the rain clouds because bad things are happening and is that's that- how we solve it is that where the song came from? No idea. Okay, well, I don't like but, the song. Yeah, well, you're you're entitled to your wrong opinion, but <laughs> uh, it's a great song. It's a beautiful song. You say so. Um, all right, so the devil's cramping ground, right? Cramping, tramping, <laughs> like tramp stamp, like tramping, like oh. walking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can go on. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> please, please so do. It, it's located obviously in uh, North Carolina. Uh, it's located on State Route 902. Um, in Bear Creek, North Carolina, specifically. So let's kind of go over the history of the Devil's Tramping Ground and like what people say and stuff like that first. Yes. Um, before I get into any like scientific specifics. So um, it's set back in an empty patch of woods uh, from the main road, which is actually, funnily enough, the Devil's Tramping Ground Road or Lane. Is, is it? Is it actually like legally called mm-hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually called that. <gasps> we have to go get a and picture like, of it. And um, like the owner of the property has like his family's owned the property for over 150 years. So like Oh, that's unfortunate. Right? Yeah. Um, mean, what land do they you have own? it. Well, devil's devil the devil tramps around here we <laughs> <own that. laughs> Yeah, you know, it's fine. Um so when you see this place, like it's set back from the main road, there's like a little trail that you have to go down um and you know when you're there because there is no shit a 40 foot circle of just dusty ashy ground where nothing grows <gasps> that's the devil's tramping ground. i love places like this yes. okay because these are actually very common not mm-hmm. very common but like uncommon yeah places like this happens where yes. nothing grows like there's um also like a couple other places like where grass will grow mm-hmm. but trees won't grow right well, this so, is a place where nothing grows. That's nuts. Yes. Okay, so that's in North Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. when pandemic is over and we can safely travel and not yes. die, my brother Ben Ooh. lives in North Carolina, oh, so we can actually maybe go, go there? do that. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be cool. Actually, okay, so we'll put that'd be that really on the, fun on the um, list because like the owner will let people like talk to him and then be like hey is it okay if we go see your property like it's always better to ask the property owner anywhere that you go uh don't do what i did that i told you about the last episode like always oh, ask the property owner through the always window? yeah always well always. well that property owner was a little mia <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, yeah so if we went like this go around yeah. it would be like a hey, yeah it'd be totally can fine we, can we please? <sighs> okay so the legend um stretches back as far back as 1882 um and the legend says that at midnight, every night, the devil himself will come down one of the trails, mm-hmm. walk in a circle, mm-hmm. or dance, mm-hmm. either one. Or tramp. Mm, tramp, possibly, <laughs> yes. Um, in this circle, um, and plot how to destroy human souls. Delicious. So, okay. Right, yes. So, it's also said that he will drop his form that's like acceptable to human eyes um and become the like fallen angel like lucifer in all of his glory Mm, um mm -hmm. and anybody that sees him will immediately go insane because we're not supposed to look upon the visage of something so holy right i didn't know that but now i do you learned something today so (laughs) (laughs) so that is something like that's the reason why people are like eh Let's not let's not do that wait so like do people go out there and get in like go insane so there's a legend okay so folklore I'm gonna, that I'm gonna anybody you're okay <laughs> so anybody that uh stays overnight it, inside the circle the next morning they either are insane or they're dead or they're just gone hey so i have a i could see it from sitting right here mm-hmm. i have a tent who 
We can go. We can go crash. Okay. We can go spend the night with uh, Satan. Perfect. Okay, cool. Listen right. to his little hoofbeats be lulled. <laughs> lulled by his little tramps. <laughs> Sounds good. So... In this circle, um, I already said that it's it's completely void of any vegetation. So anything that is transplanted from outside the circle, like any grass or anything, because, you know, it's this big 40-foot circle, and then the outside is, like, ringed with pretty green grass and, then like, big trees, and it's in the middle of the woods. Anything that's transplanted there will wither and die. Like, it, it just will not go at all. That's crazy. Yes. And if anyone leaves anything inside the circle, like, if you put you know, shoe or whatever you have with you that you want to put in the circle. The next morning when you return, it'll be flung, like flung out of the circle. Like, like that bitch is not chilling. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. So. Oh, we gotta go. (laughs) So there's that. So any animal uh, that's forced to approach the circle because they won't just like walk up to it by themselves, like people who have brought their dogs with them, the closer they get to the circle, the dogs start whimpering and crying and like tucking their tails and like trying to run away. So animals do not want to go there. I already said nobody can stay in the circle overnight. There's reports of people who like walk by who see like these big red glowing eyes in the center of the circle in the dark. Oh, I'm going to vomit. Oh, Uh, God. Oh, get it. Mm -hmm. So um, also people who are driving by because you can you can kind of see it like off you know, through the woods Mm -hmm. as you pass on the road, see like a shadowy figure through the trees. Mm. And then the locals who have ever, you know, because with any place that you go, like kids from the area are going to do dumb shit. Always. So like case in point. Oh, haha, it's me. I just, I just gestured. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. So anyone who, like any of the locals who have gone to visit the Devil's Tramping Ground at night, all mention this intense feeling of anxiety the later it starts to get in the evening. So, like, they get there, the sun's still up, everything's chill, you know, things are a little a little weird. Right, because the ex- existential dread doesn't start yeah. until after the sun goes down. Correct. So, once the sun goes down and the existential horror sets in, existential. Um, you, you're fine. I can't. <laughs> they um, start getting more and more and more anxious until it turns into a full-blown panic. And then they leave because they don't want to be there anymore. Because anxiety dictates. Correct. Anxiety dictates. You protect yourself and <laughs> go away. So approaching. So like I saw a couple of videos online from some of the like local paranormal societies mm-hmm. who had visited and approaching the area. There's like whitewashed animal bones like laying on the ground and like set in patterns. And there's like even a like a, what looks like a like a dog skull like hanging on a tree, Gross. like weird shit, right? So there's some woo woo people, <sighs> yeah, some doing some sketchy people stuff. doing some stuff. So that's kind of crazy. A lot of people note like as you approach the circle, there's a distinct lack of like wildlife sounds, so you don't hear. <sighs> that bothers me. That like, that when, that's when the thing birds that freaks me out. Are not chirping. Mm-hmm. It's all right. We get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the <laughs> we're, car. We're going home. <laughs> so other people notice that. When the wind blows and you're standing inside the circle, like you can notice that there's wind right as you approach. But when you get to the very center of the circle, it doesn't feel like a straight wind anymore. It feels kind of like a whirlwind around you, which kind of freaks freaks That's, me out a little bit. I, don't, I hate I don't that. Like that. I'm um, like I'm like getting goosebumps over here. My eyes are watering. I <laughs> yes. just want you to know because like this is yeah we could go there. Like we hell could, yeah we we're could, gonna go there. Um, like no 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 you said that <laughs> mm-hmm, we're gonna go now. Uh, so one more thing um, when you walk through the circle with a compass like from straight across from one side to the other mm-hmm. and you have a compass out your compass will start to change directions. Bullshit. Yeah, I swear to God. No. Like, I saw it in a video. It's real. We gotta bring your compass. Well, we Correct. Go. Okay. Yes. So the compass will straight up change direction and start like moving around. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you're walking a straight line. Like your orientation is not changing that much. Mm-hmm. So that's weird. Yeah, no, if you're walking in a straight line, your compass should not go from pointing right. north to south. That's <laughs> not how that works. So, no. So, especially because North Carolina is not even anywhere near a pole. And it's actually like, I know we talk about ley lines a lot, it's not on a ley line. There's one. In, there's a couple in North Carolina, but mm-hmm. not through Bear the Creek. Grounds. Okay. Yeah. So there's some alternate theories other than it being the devil shows up, and that's why the ground's all funny. Mm-hmm. One of the more prevalent ones, like none of these have any 
basis in reality necessarily. Okay. Um, no, like, hard proof. But uh, some people claim that there was a bloody battle between two rival American Indian tribes that resulted Ew. in the land becoming barren just from the amount of blood shed, which is a horrifying That's god image. awful. Yes. Um, That's a lot, like... Blo- yeah. blood yes. that's a lot of blood that's a lot of dead people right. but also thinking about it why would it be a perfect circle but yeah so that obviously doesn't yeah also like, make sense it doesn't make sense to me. so it's it's legitimately like a pretty perfect circle mm-hmm. yeah yeah like i'll show you pictures after this it's straight up is a perfect circle dang like almost exactly the same in diameter anywhere that you start going like across mm-hmm. it's bananas so there's no like historical recorded information to support there being that kind of a battle there. Another idea is that perhaps it's a site of a UFO landing because it is that perfect circle yeah. and there's no trees and maybe it doesn't grow anything because of a strange radiation or something from the exhaust that's permeated the ground. And yeah, yeah. That's a legitimate. Okay, I could maybe see that. There's no supported accounts of any like sightings or anything in this area though. Mm-hmm. And since it's been there like the owner can verify at least 150 years with that circle in it. Right. Hmm. I don't know. Then the last thing I wanted to point out about it. So there's actually a scientist, a uh, soil scientist, whose name is Richard Hayes, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. Uh, 15, 20 years ago did a testing on the soil in the circle. And he to died. See- no. Oh, okay. no, he's fine. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, go dark, <laughs> Lord. Um, so he he went in to check intentionally to see if there was any, like, high amounts of copper, which would cause things not to grow. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's a reasonable assumption for North Carolina specifically. Okay. Copper. Because, uh, like, mm-hmm. we have limestone and mm-hmm. red clay here in Tennessee. Yes. So, like, copper. Okay. Yeah. So, copper, like, there there's... A pretty good chance of there being a high amount of copper in North Carolina just as a whole. Okay. Um, so, like, a copper deposit in yeah. the ground. Okay. Yes. So, he checked that to see if maybe that was why nothing would grow. There were no abnormal amounts of copper. Mm. The same held true when he tested for salt concentration mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. see if, you know, maybe, eh, it's the not going to grow because of all the salt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it's just slightly under what normal soil concentration is. So he was actually retested, or excuse me, he was actually asked to retest the soil in 2015. Mm -hmm. And he sent the lab, or he sent the results to a lab for a new analysis, just to have a secondary opinion to what he saw. Right, right. Just so it was, you know, more verified. Yeah, more, yeah, more. Yeah, makes total sense to me. More people, yeah. So those results came back saying that the vegetation, like vegetation should be able to grow. There is no explanation for why nothing grows there. There's nothing wrong with the soil. Okay, so my question mm-hmm. is, is has anybody dug down, like, mm-hmm. deep? Not that I have found. Okay, because sometimes, because I was watching, it was actually a TikTok, which is strange enough, a, there was, like, a patch of grass that mm-hmm. wasn't growing in this person's yard, and they were like, why, like, why is it not growing? And yeah. when they dug down, it was because there was a, a wall of a house oh. in the ground. So it just makes me wonder if there's actually something like for like, cause you can test mm-hmm. the soil on top, but what, what about 50 feet down? Right. Like, yeah. Which, which 50 feet down maybe might be too far because right. obviously, you know, you have, that's 50 feet, but like 10 yeah. feet down, like what there's, is there something like polluting mm-hmm. the dirt further down? Certainly. That's something I'm not really sure about. I would actually have to have a conversation with the scientist and be like, Hey, so you know about dirt. Tell me. Tell me more. Um, <laughs> How far down did you go? I have no idea. Yeah. Well, but when we go, we'll bring shovels. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so this guy, Hayes, when he talked to the lab and they said the vegetation should grow, they actually said that the soil inside the devil's tramping ground in that circle mm-hmm. is more fertile than the soil outside of it. Because what? people... Yeah. So... What? People, when they visit, will set bonfires in the center... And oh. all of the ashes from, like, the hardwoods that they use yeah, yeah. has made the soil more fertile than the surrounding soil. But it's still, nothing's growing. Correct. Why? Which is sketchy as shit. So, yeah. That just, that doesn't, why? I don't know, man. Why? I don't know why it happens. I don't really, I don't really get it. So, there is uh, one story, now that I've kind of told you all that, that's okay. like a spooky story about it. Yes, Because, you know, people get that overwhelming sense of anxiety when they're in the circle and it starts to get later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one guy who spent the night there. The whole night. The whole night. 
So he was Balls a reporter. Of right. steel. <laughs> no oh joke, my dude. god. Because <laughs> he was by himself. Like he took him oh. and his two dogs. Oh, okay. Like camped in a fucking Balls tent. Of diamond. Okay. Camped in a tent. With his dog. Mm-hmm. Okay. In the center of the circle. And his dogs woke him up in the middle of the night crying. <gasps> and he was cry. kept up by thumping noises going around his fucking tent, dude. I, I have goosebumps. I <laughs> Like, the tent didn't move, though. So I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Too close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have goosebumps. Yeah. So I'm gonna that, cry. <laughs> you're gonna be okay, I promise. Did he, like, rec- like He didn't record uh... anything. He, he stayed there to prove to the people of North Carolina, no, it's not as scary as you think it is. And but, he wasn't gonna get, like, physically picked up and moved out of the circle. Well. So. Well. I he hope wasn't. he wore brown but, pants. <laughs> hope you had a bucket with him <laughs> but yeah so he he made it through the night he was okay uh he ended up going on and writing his article but that is the only story that i've heard of people being able to fully spend the night there there's of course stories of locals going in trying getting and spooked and running out um please tell me do you have so, do you have any Huh? No, no. Unfortunately, I don't have any others. Um, that's the only story that I really heard. Okay. Um, everybody else, it was more just urban legends about the Devil's Tramping Ground, about mm-hmm. how scary it is, uh, stuff like that. But I do know that the owners, the current owners, are looking to clean the property up a little bit and organize tours so people can actually come and see the area and do so in like a healthy, respectable way. Oh, it just instead not- of bonfire fuck up right. the circle yeah and trash like, and yeah because outside of the circle has a lot of trash and a lot of debris from people coming and like being, doing dumb shit shit bags and right. not saving the turtles and just throwing their aluminum cans around you know stuff like that so the owners are looking to actually get it cleaned up maintain it be able to take people on tour show them the area so they can enjoy it just as much as the owners enjoy it so good yeah and that is the story of the devil's tramping ground i'm glad i gave you some goose spooks I, I watered up. My eyes watered up a little bit. I saw it start to happen. I was like, oh, no. Yes. Uh, when I get really scared about ghosts, my eyes start to water, which I hate so much because it's like, I'm going to start crying. I'm so scared, <laughs> which is the opposite of what I want. Please let me see clearly so I can run the fuck away. Yeah. No. See, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to fucking punch it, which doesn't, doesn't work, work for something that's incorporeal. So, you know. In- incorporeal? Can't touch it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or you just say you can't punch something. That's not there. There? Yes. Has no physical Also true. Being. Yeah. I like the I like the theory of the the UFO. Mm-hmm. I think because I'm a huge supporter of UFO Me too. Bullshit. And that in like the perfect circle that makes sense. Like the UFO touches down and like the radiation that we've always uh has been theorized with UFOs is the, the radiation that comes off of the craft mm-hmm. to generate flight or whatever. Like just the material even of mm-hmm. itself. So I like that one. I'm going to yeah. go with that one, but yeah. it still doesn't explain the thumping. But maybe, did it say how large the land is surrounding? No. So the devil, I know that it's on a plot of land, and I know that the devil's tramping ground is like in a corner of it. Right. I'm not sure anything about like the surrounding area. I don't know if it was like they had a farm and it was like they were on like 100 acres or something like that. Because yeah. there still are mountain people. Yes, I think it, it is a, a working farm, Okay, but I think that that section isn't Clearly. fenced in with the rest of it. Okay. So it's if it is fenced in, it's in a separate lot mm-hmm. then, or a separate field than mm-hmm. everything else. Because the thought did cross my mind, well, what if it's like a cow or something else? But then you have to remember animals don't go there mm. by themselves. It's true. So there's that. I mean, it could have just been like some asshole kid being like, <laughs> look at this guy in his tent. Like, well, could be that. There are, like, this, mm-hmm. might, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, there's, like, those, like, mountain people mm-hmm. where, I mean, you don't, like, uh, squatters. So, like, yes. they come and squat on your land and you don't yes. even know that they're there. So, like, you know, witches and yeah. woo-woo people of that stature could mm-hmm. just be hanging out on your 150 acres and you don't even oh, know yeah. it. So Oh, yeah. that's that, that, that could be a thing. Um, I think also the fact that it's next to a road that people actually drive on. Yeah. Eh. You know, yeah. I don't know. Someone jumps out real quick and says, I'm going to fuck with this tent over here. Right. Yeah. I mean, you never know. But usually with with the dogs crying, though, usually 
animals can sense humans yes. kind of thing. Yeah. So, like, if there was a human running around, a dog would be like, ooh, human. Yeah, be like, ooh, 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 human. Like, we, bork at not it. cry. Yes. So, like, the whimpering dogs freaked me out a little bit, and I was like, okay. And when, then him saying that they were, like, stamping around his tent, I was like, mm, when I animals, about that. When animals start to, it's, yes. it's over. Like, yeah. it, we're done. We're out. It's just game over. No, yes. It, when the animals start to freak. A hundred percent, if I ever, or I say if I ever, when I buy a house, I'm straight up taking a dog with me. Like, yes. Because if the yes. dog starts to flip shit, like, nah, yeah, nope, A dog is like a dowsing this. rod. It's just yeah. like, it's I'm gonna good. know if there's some shit up in the right. house. Yeah. We ain't doing that. No, thank you. So. My mom did that once. That's because she's smart. That's well, what you Well, do. no, no, no. Actually, oh, okay. she was like the... Uh, this is terrible to say. She was like the dog in this situation okay. where she went into a house uh -huh. to view with a realtor. Right. And she went to go upstairs and she had just this this overwhelming feeling of, I do not need to be here right, right. now. And she went like all in the bottom, yeah. uh, first floor of the house and like toured it with the realtor. Uh -huh. And as soon as they started to go up the stairs, she was like, nope, nope, nope. And literally ran. She's like, I'm sorry, I have to go and ran out of the house. Well, see, that's that's a good thing to know, too, like, ahead of time, because going into a house, you're like, I don't feel safe here. This is not okay. Like, eh. Or there's a ghost here, huh. and my realtor's not telling me. Right. Like, which they have to disclose if someone died in the house. Yeah, but realtors are but. sometimes sketchy, not good people. Correct. So, there's that. So, just when in doubt, sage it out. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Google search your house for any kind of crime, or, like, if there's a house that you decide, oh, hey, I want to buy this. Please, please Google search it. Please go to the county commission and be like, hey, give me all the police reports you have on this property. Thank you. Because it's going to be in the police reports, which is public record. A quick do that search of your property could probably save you so much time, yes. so much money, so much heartache Yeah, of saving yeah. yourself from all that. Yes. Which, bottle flipping mm, garbage. Bullshit. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you. Which, ugh, bleh, no. Yeah. We're just, good. just do Google search. So. Yes. Tell me. Give me the spookening. Oh, this is this one. Okay, so my topic is called Pluckley Village. Oh. It's in Kent City. It's a, no, not city. It's a village. Kent Village. So it's a, so Pluckley uh -huh. Village. I don't know how. Kent is just like a, an area in the UK. Yes. So yeah. I don't know like how city, state, well, country I, works I, mm -hmm. in like county like how we have cities counties states then the country i don't know how that works over Dude, in the uk i actually don't and i'm very ashamed to acknowledge my ignorance please someone tell us how that works it's okay so uh, we'll just say like it's pluckley village like that's the name mm -hmm. of the village and then kent is we'll, we'll call it like the state or the the prov yeah. province yeah something like that and then it's That'll in work. the uk so we're okay. so we're over in the uk now okay so the whole village yeah is like Welcome to the Thunderdome. Oh. It's... Okay. Huh. Guinness Book of World Records. Uh-huh. I kept getting two different dates, whether okay. it be 1988 or 1998. Okay. Gave this village the world record for the most haunted village in the world. Oh, Jesus. Or in England? I think it was maybe England. Uh, most ha haunted village in England. It had officially 12 ghosts. Okay. But there are way more than that. Okay. There's what? just more. So it's it's welcome to the Thunderdome. Yeah. You're so not, you're not kidding. Any Jesus. <laughs> any paranormal person mm -hmm. like you you want to experience yeah. go go to this village. Go to go to Pluckley Village. You can go to any of the bars, any of the inns. You can literally go on the streets down by the creek. That's bananas. There is a ghost, and these aren't ghosts. As as I was talking in our first episode, how ghosts can either be like mists mm -hmm. or you actually see them mm -hmm. all these ghosts are you could see details of them like like balls to the wall here i am hello yes yes it's there it, there's a lot going on and so there's there's not a whole lot of history okay to the village that leads up to these ghosts okay. honestly it's just all of these ghosts have been people have died lord that's just that's just it and why they've just manifested as ghosts later okay. is interesting people have just died here Okay. A lot. Sounds like a, a lot of, at least 12 of them. At least 12. So, <laughs> unfortunately, I tried to do a little bit of researching to find mm -hmm. that record. 
Okay. And the Guinness Book of World Records dropped that title. They do not oh. use it anymore for obvious reasons because yeah. paranormal is a little controversial. Right. Even though I hopped on the website and I tried to search in their archives, I could not find anything, which was unfortunate. So I couldn't okay. figure out what the 12 official ghosts are. And even when I went on Pluckley Village's website, they mm-hmm. didn't even have all 12 ghosts listed. Oh. Okay. I think they only had like 11. Wild. So I gathered... Okay. All of the ghosts that I could find, or at least haunted places also, because there's individual ghosts that are hanging out. Right. And then there's just houses and pubs that are also haunted, that also have multiple ghosts in them, too, that have been seen. And Jeez. all of these ghosts are so detailed that people have labeled them yeah. appropriately to whatever they have seen of these ghosts. That's wild. That's, it's number one. Tell me. The Highwayman. Okay. Uh, Robert Dubo. Robert Dubois, mm-hmm. B-O-I-S. The um, voice. It's probably French, so you don't probably pronounce the S. Uh-huh. So, I don't... Fair. Here we are. Killed in the 18th century. Okay. So, a little old. There's a particular corner in Pluckley Village outside. It's a, it's a road connection. It's called mm-hmm. the Fright Corner. Okay. So, a lot of ghosts, a couple of ghosts manifest in this area, okay. so they just deemed it Fright Corner. So, this, this particular highwayman... The ghost of this highwayman is seen on this corner of the road. One While, like, stretch of road because yeah, highwayman. Yes. Which makes sense, actually. So, but. Yeah, so apparently it was actually like a trade yeah. route turned into an actual road now. Okay, yeah. And he was a highwayman, so he probably got killed there. Yes. More so than l- likely. Let me tell you the story of the highwayman. <gasps> Gimme. <Give> so he, <laughs> he was robbing people. That's what highwaymen do. So there was an old hollow oak tree. So like a oak tree that, you know. Mm-hmm. Fell over and hollow now, so it's yeah. the stump of it. Yeah. He would hide in the oak tree and then would ambush people traveling through the area. And there's two different two different stories about okay. how this highway man died. It's either the peacekeepers or the, the law law holders of mm-hmm. the village had enough of this highway man and they killed him on this oak tree. Just kind of ambushed him and killed him. The second way that has been told that this highway man has died is somebody knew of like there's a highwayman in the oak tree is this the hollow oak tree i don't know and just stuck his sword through the oak tree through the highwayman and killed him so well i mean i guess that's one way to take care of a guy in a tree sure apparently because he's dead so he dies uh on that tree so it is rumored that that scene of the highwayman Mm -hmm. being killed and stabbed is still reenacted by the ghost so people still see this highwayman hanging out on the road and that is ghosty number one. Okay. Okay. So the highwayman. Highwayman. Okay. Number two is the schoolmaster. Ooh. It I already don't like it. Po- uh, Post World War Two or okay. World War One, so in nineteen twenties, mm-hmm. the local schoolmaster unfortunately hung himself. Oh. And um. Oh, that's so sad. Which it is. Which weirdly enough, he hung himself on a on a on a lane. On a mm-hmm. road ish yeah. area, so the owner of the that lane the, mm-hmm. off of the off of that road, the owner, and then some of they it claimed that some of his children of the school also found him hanging in the tree. So oh. he can be seen walking around. It's called Dickie Bus's Lane. So the That's owner so of the sad. property is Dickie Bus. The schoolmaster hung himself, and he can be seen wearing a long coat okay. with striped white trousers. So again. He's seen vivid enough that you yeah, can people know what he's see wearing, his clothing and like. know it's him. Unfortunately, that poor soul hung himself and his spirit still lingers in that area. Number three, some of these deaths are a little tragic and it's yeah. so sad. So, because here's another one. So, it's oh. called the Screaming Man. Oh, God. And he's a brick worker. Okay. So, it is the folk- folklore that surrounds this, this man is that he was a clay worker, brick okay. worker, and as he was building a wall Mm -hmm. of clay apparently it fell over and trapped him and killed him ow so okay (laughs) so as he was dying obviously Mm -hmm. was also screaming like trying to get out yeah for sure his screams can be heard inside of the brick walls that are throughout pluckley because there are just some like embankments like retaining walls and stuff like that so sometimes you can just hear a man screaming and screaming is also a common thing of this village see i don't like that part like people talking all right cool like i can in my brain play that off as like ah oh, somebody's just over there and i just can't see them it's fine but like somebody screaming, screaming like 
I'm going to try and help whoever the hell that is. That's loud. No. <sighs> Why would you? Because I would hear somebody screaming and be like, oh shit, somebody's in trouble. I better go try and find them. But that's funny, if it's like, I'm just like, oh, ghost, someone's screaming, I'll call the cops. But yeah, no, I'm sorry. like, uh, let's, let's, number one, call 911. That's step one. Or 111 <laughs> in England. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then go try and help whoever the fuck it is. But if you can't find the person, whoops. But they're not there. It's, <laughs> it's a ghost. It's a it's ghost. A ghost. All right. I don't like and that. We're going back into the house. So, yeah. So there's there's other screaming, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So the brick worker, he died. Yeah. So that's sad. This one got me. <sighs> oh no. This one got me a little bit. It's a spectral coach with horses. Oh, spooky horse and carriage. Yes. Ooh. It's on Maltman's Hill, so okay. a particular road that goes throughout this village. Yeah. The sound of hooves on stone yeah. can be kind of heard if you're walking through this area. You'll just hear the clopping of the hooves. Again, it's so vivid, yeah. people have thought it was real. Yeah. So apparently there was a babysitter, there, there was an account of a babysitter in the 1900 area. It's, I can't remember what time it was. We're called staying at this person's house, watching the mm -hmm. children as they looked out the window. They saw a horse-drawn carriage and right. they thought it was real that they went to go investigate and it was like no it's not even there anymore oh that's strange i didn't hear it leave and then in the late 1900s i think it was like the 1970s mm -hmm. a man reported maybe it was 80s a man reported as he was driving down the road that he heard mm -hmm. the hooves on stone so vividly in his car oh God, it almost no. made him crash yeah, no, because, like, you're not expecting to hear that inside your, your car. car. Hooves on stone. So. No. I don't like that. So that it's it's such a vivid occurrence that uh, people see it. It's caused issues. So fun stuff. Nope. So slight, slight, slight history. Okay. Slight history that I did skip over, but it's okay. so small. Give me. The lords of the land, there's a more technical term, but there was someone who was knighted and then established in this area. Yeah. The family's called During. Okay. D-E-R-I-N-G. And they had a house called Surrendon. There we go. Surrendon okay. During. So they have a manor. Yeah. They live there. So th there is this family called During mm -hmm. um, that live there. Number one. So this is ghost number five now. Yeah. Uh, the first During is the lady in white. She Aww. stalks the church and the library of the old family home. So she can be seen. There's, yeah. a, there's the manor of that. Uh, of the during yeah. yes and then a church kind of right next to it so you okay. can see you could see a lady in white man how bougie do you have to be to have your own fucking church lord well it was like the village church oh okay yeah no 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 <laughs> so somewhere some some for some reason in my brain it was like oh well i mean some rich people have like family cemeteries so maybe their church is just like right in front of the cemetery and they own the church too okay bougie <laughs> that makes sense. no they it was just a church for the it was a church chapel for the village so it okay. just happened to be how the how that village next got established okay. next fair enough so she's a little bit of a tragic story as well she died so young mm -hmm. her it just destroyed her husband she was portrayed to be such a beautiful woman yeah. and her husband was just so distraught by this yeah. he buried her inside either three or seven different coffins Okay, so like one inside of each other? Yes, to preserve her beauty. Because she died a long time ago. So this wasn't like... Yeah. This wasn't like uh, a current like sciences applied yeah. to the situation. So, right, certainly. So she was wanting to be pres preserved by her husband. So she yeah. was buried inside, uh, inside of all of these coffins. And then mm -hmm. inside of a giant oak coffin to just seal it all off. Right. She could either be seen... Walking around the graveyard, holding a single red rose, mm -hmm. or you can hear scratching <laughs> inside of the coffin. Oh, that one gives me goose chills. I don't like that. This is the second time I've mentioned scratchings and you've freaked out like this. I don't like the idea of something scratching because, like, like not you, you uh. me, but, like, <laughs> the idea of being trapped inside oh, a small oh. area and then, like, trying to scratch your way out, like, that scares me. <laughs> Yeah, see? Okay, see, I just got cool uh -huh. You're uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh. That's what I think of every time you say scratch it. I'm like, oh, no. Yes. Yes. So she, that's the reports you can hear the scratching from the graveyard. So I found a story, though, two stories okay. involving this lady in white, uh, one of the lady Durings. So she was a, a lady of Durings right. uh, yeah. that passed. So apparently during World War One and World War Two, mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Embassy stayed in surrendered during house okay during this time period used mm -hmm. it as like the embassy hq yeah whatever officials 
from the U.S. Embassy saw her and reported it. Oh, okay. So, like, it's it's there. It was yeah. it was noted that she was there. The second story is that after the house, I don't think the house is owned by the Durings anymore. So somebody who was employed to take care of the home and stay there, yeah, saw her okay. and scared him so bad he shot his rifle at her. Jeez. So, Which, I mean, to be fair, if I had a hunting rifle and I saw somebody that was, like, spooky, I'd be like, oh, Lord, and lose my mind. So, but, apparently, she, oof. like, looked so vivid and so real that he yeah. was scared enough to shoot at her. That's crazy. That's bananas. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, I mean, I get I get spooked by stuff, but, like, I also wonder what was going through his head, like, if he could acknowledge or, or like, see, this is a lady... But it's not a lady. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can tell, like, ah, that's not what it's supposed to be. Brain's not registering. What? Right. Yeah. So maybe that's why he was like, ah, shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot yeah. it dead. Please. Which did not work. Yeah. Because she's already dead. But. Oh, yeah. There was, yeah. That, there was mm-hmm. that problem. So she is during lady number one, ghost number five. So ghost number okay. six is during lady number two. Okay. <clears throat> she was alive during the 1100 so this is dating Lordy yeah mercy. D- dating a little far back she 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 passed away in the church's uh church of saint nicholas is mm-hmm. the one that they have there in that village she was put in a lead coffin with red roses so she is called the lady of red or the red lady she haunts the graveyard wailing Aww. looking for her unborn child oh no which is also really another sad story Ugh. yep that's really sad it is so there's wailing so more screaming in this village Ugh. which is i don't want to go like there's so much screaming yeah see like i, I too mm. loud too loud so the too seventh much. seventh ghost uh-huh holy jeez, is <laughs> Seven. a monk of gray stones which is the house that was built uh-huh. for the caretaker to work with the church so they built a they built okay. a house for a person to stay to take care of the Church of Saint Nicholas that was that's right. in the village, right? That so makes sense. the house was originally called Rectory Cottage mm-hmm. and was built in 1863. But once they renamed the house to or renamed the cottage in 1924 to Greystones, okay. the monk disappeared. There is no okay. story about why this monk is there. Uh huh why that started and why it stopped other than they changed the name and all of a sudden there's no more activity at this house yeah, that's, that's so really in strange. 1924 the monk stopped appearing but there's still enough evidence in folklore mm-hmm. surrounding this monk that it's still considered a ghost yeah of Pluckley village that's kind of crazy yeah and like, i was trying to think of the word of what like the homes of people who work for the church are called and it's rectory so you saying that, I was yes, like, ha, 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 that Rectory thing, College. yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Yeah. Especially, like, changing the name, it, I would almost assume it would make a ghost be like, hey, no, you're wrong, that's not what it's called. Get more haunty, that's Fix what I expected. It. Yeah. Like, but they're like, nope, stopped showing no, up, gone. so it's, okay. Oh, all right, well, all I right. guess that's, I that's all you have to do when your is, house is, is haunted. What is happening stop in- Stop calling it a house. Luckily, village. No, it's now called Greystones. Yeah, yeah, just call your house Greystones, the ghosts will go away. It's fine. <laughs> That, that is not actual advice. Don't do that. <laughs> Number eight is a gypsy woman. She okay. is found on Pinnock, Pinnock Bridge. Okay. Which is also a part of the Fright Corner, apparently. Okay. So she was a gypsy woman. It didn't give an exact date of when she was around. Right. So we'll just assume probably gypsy long time ago. Mm-hmm. She would go into the river or okay. creek. Yeah. A water, water flowy thing. Yeah. Uh, and would get watercress from the water and okay. then sell. So she was killed. Aww. There's three different stories that surrounds her death. Okay. So the first one is that she accidentally caught herself on fire because mm-hmm. she, she her apparition, her ghost, is always seen with a pipe. Okay. So there, there's speculation that she accidentally burnt herself alive because she dropped her pipe in her gin-soaked mm. skirt caught on fire. Okay. The second story is she was purposely set on fire in her sleep mm-hmm. because she's a gypsy woman, or she drowned in the stream. Okay. Three different stories that I've heard. Either way, she's dead, and yeah. she haunts that bridge and that stream. So she can either be seen just sitting on the bridge, mm-hmm. smoking her pipe, or... Sounds she, like my kind of woman. Or she's... 
I love how you just keep going. I tried. Yeah. Um, or she could be seen walking the bridge and okay. she never speaks. But if she just appears, she's yeah. there either chilling on the bridge or walking the bridge. I would I would say that probably the second one is more... Walking the bridge? No, the, the like second way that she died is probably more Oh, set on fire. Yeah, mm-hmm. because yeah, gypsies because, were not... I mean, even if somebody dumped intentionally gin on her... Right. And then, like, knocked her pipe out of her hand, like... People are shit. People suck. <sighs> yeah. So that woman... Bless her sweet soul and may she find rest. And she's apparently didn't because she's still walking around. So the ninth ghost of this place is the Miller. So I mentioned with the schoolmaster, Mm -hmm. Dickie Bus Lane. Yes. This is a person. His name is Richard, quote unquote, Dickie Mm -hmm. Bus. He is the Miller, was the Miller of Pluckley Village, owned an actual windmill. Right. And was... Miller. He closed it down in the 1930s, okay. and then nine years later, his mill was struck by lightning Ooh. and burnt down Ooh. to the ground. After Dickie passed away, he can sometimes be seen in a thunderstorm. Oh. So he still haunts the his Miller area. Did he die in the mill fire? Nope. Huh. He just haunts the area now. I guess he was a little upset that his mill did his pretty big well yeah i mean I'd, I'd be pretty pissed off if yeah. something like that happened i don't imagine a uh, weather insurance was a thing at the time uh, no so. not not who <laughs> not in the 1950s when he probably died so he haunts that area mm-hmm. number 10 the colonel okay it's believed that he hung himself in park wood hmm. which is just another wooded area around this yeah. village because it's a it's a pretty tiny village like it's yeah. got maybe 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 a hundred houses buildings yeah. that is fairly small hung himself there's no no one knows who it is but apparently mm-hmm. like his the apparition is so vivid you can still see the clothing that you can assume it's an army colonel person so they just coined him the colonel even though the forest was also cleared a little bit yeah. the apparition is still there okay so it's not tied to the trees necessarily nope it is he's he's still walking around in those trees even though it's been cleaned up a lot okay. so Number 11. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Mistress of Rose Court. Okay. She took her own life from eating poisonous berries. She was apparently in a love triangle. Oh, Lord. And just off herself. Man, ain't nobody worth doing that to yourself. No, especially not some poor love triangle. Ugh. Uh, no, love yourself more than that. Goodness. You, you deserve it. Yeah. So Seriously. She, yeah. So she she's apparently seen around Rose Court. There wasn't really more to it than that. Just yeah. another apparition that could be seen. Yeah, she walks another around. Another tragic death. Another tragedy that happens in this village. Why? So the twelfth place is the Black Horse Pub. Oh, I love that Black name. Black Horse though. Pub. There we go. Uh, built in the nineteen fourteen fifties. Excuse me. This place is also welcome to the Thunderdome because in this pub there's three ghosts. Oh yeah, get it. Defined, but there's just more activity that goes on in there it's just it's it's just just nonstop. it's not nonstop fun house most haunted pub in england it's been coined there's several ghosts that have been identified Er, there's a woman in a long red dress in the upstairs room there's a poltergeist that makes items disappear right in front of people hard fucking no i'm good but he's nice what no what if he like brings it back later credit card nope he brings it back later you you later find it Okay. So most ghosts that like move shit and you can't find it and you're like, God damn it, bring me my thing. They'll bring you your thing. But Seriously? Well, a lot of times, like, have you ever noticed something in your house like go missing and like you knew where it was and you're like, I know I put it there. Just be like, Oh shoot, I really need this thing and then sometimes it'll just show up in the weirdest places, like sitting in your chair or laying on your table or That's just never weird happened places. to me. I mean, happened to me I, I feel like I put scissors once in the in the fridge mm. but that was me okay 110 percent. fair well it was a day huh. so so the items return later to the yeah. to the owners well that's nice at there's least. reports of all different kinds of ghost stories people go in there and they say that they have bad dreams and they see yeah. see stuff stuff gets moved obviously so that pub's on fire just no free lit joke. with activity the next place number 13 on the list is the blacksmith's arms Okay. I think this is also a tavern pub okay. kind of deal. I didn't okay. really say. I think it's a tavern pub kind of. I mean, I would combo. assume so with a name like the the, the blacksmith's, blacksmith's arms, arms, like like big beefy man big, arms. Big you know beefy. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, three ghosts. Okay. Live in this place. 
There's a tutor maid that can be seen. Okay. A coachman who sometimes appears in the corner and gazes longly into the fire. Okay. And a cavalier that wanders the upstairs bedrooms. Again, uh -huh. if you noticed what I just said, yeah. all three of these ghosts have specific titles yeah. that they're appearing so vividly to people. Yeah, that they can address. The, oh, that's you a saw cavalier. That's a tutor maid. Yeah. What? That's crazy. Three distinctive ghosts in that place. That place must be crazy. This whole like the whole village. village. Just, so you know, I said screaming. Yeah. Oh no, there's more. I looked on the Google Maps. It's a little, little, a little ways outside of um, the actual village itself. But there's okay. a plot of woods. Okay. Called the Screaming Woods. Oh, I hate it. There's no reason. No, I couldn't. I tried to do research of why it's called the Screaming Woods. Okay. And I got some creepypasta results. So I'm like, right. no, that's not right. No particular reason as to why. The The legend goes that people who left the village would sometimes get lost in those woods and then would die. Yeah. The woods aren't that large. Right. Unless, unless over the years, the the, the woods have been cut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I looked on the Google Maps, it's it didn't. It's not see, that big. It's not that big. So unless in, in the past it was bigger, that would make sense. That could right. be a thing. Um, unless it was cut down for farming, which is also plausible. Yeah. So screaming when screaming they do do tours. Was, nope. And I hate and it. during the day, I there, hate that part. There's there's no. It's it's a non nonstop scream fest. It does not matter what time of the day. It's active all the time. Like no. Yeah. When no. it's when it's daytime and stuff's going on. Nope. This whole village is just. Does not nope. matter what time of the day it is, stuff is happening. Nope, I don't like it. See, that that's the thing that scares me probably as much as the scratching. Like, <laughs> I I don't want to hear or see shit during the daylight. No, like, like this, is, this is my time. Yeah. Fuck off. Go back yeah. to your nighttime bullshit. Yeah, no, I like to close my eyes in the dark. Like, don't, hmm, don't, yeah, don't show have, up during my daytime. I have things I have to do during the day. Please yeah. stop. No, no, thank you. I'm good. So- when I when I picked this topic, yeah. I did not think that it was going to be this charge because I'm like, yeah. how is a whole village haunted? Yeah, no, that's a Cause, lot. Because I would have thought like the Black Horse Pub, fine, yeah. like one building, but yeah. no, 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 this is Everywhere. like you can go there and you can get a walking tour. Uh -huh. So there is some sort of management deal where they will allow you to walk all these places they'll they'll bring you on a hike it's a reasonable mm -hmm. kind of thing and so basically they'll start you off whatever place and then you'll yeah. end up at the black horse pub and you get food and then you're done touring for the day so that's crazy you can fly out there if you want to and check out the thunderdome no i'm good no because like like that like the idea of like walking tours reminds me or like riding tours or whatever uh makes me think of savannah georgia because mm. they have like so many horse-drawn carriage haunted rides like, where they just take you all through a historic downtown and are like, here's the spooky stuff. Here's this spooky thing. And it's it's kind of cool. Like, I got to do that when I went, but it was in the middle of the day. So, of course, nothing happened. It was just, let me tell you about the history of this thing and this thing and this thing. But, like... I still ugh. haven't seen a ghost. G good. I haven't either. My dad has. Yeah, nope. I watched my dad see the ghost. Which, That's That worse. was awful. I had never seen that man freak out and go so pale before in my life yeah no i'm good that's a that's an aside but i've never no me either i've seen like weird shit happen i've never like seen a ghost so we need we need to we need to go do so, we need so to we, no yes we'll talk about it we'll talk yeah, we'll about it. figure it out we'll talk about it so thanks for tuning into our episode two we got another one checked off the list. How exciting. This very, is so much very fun. Very exciting, actually. So if you want to learn more about us, what we got going on, please check out our website at www.hauntherIbarelyknowher.com. Mm -hmm. And if you wish to support us, we do have a Patreon page going, patreon.com slash hauntherIbarelyknowher. If you, if, you if you don't know the theme by now, it's yeah. haunt her, I barely know her. Perfect. I still love it. It's the best. It's. It I, still, I still chuckle every time I'm like, haunt her. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, and hopefully we'll see you guys next time. Stay spooky. My friends. Haunt her. I barely know her.